<laughs> Call a meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Roll call. Uh, we'll show all board members present with the exception of Keith Young, he's home ill. Um, fourth item on the agenda is usually our student rep and principals, but I see all empty chairs. Um, Jeff, do you have anything that they would have talked about? I don't. I have a few things that I'll just mention in the superintendent's okay. report that someone might have brought up. Then we'll go on to There's the conferences tonight. In case on it. Right. Okay. Um, Achievement and recognition portion. And we have several this evening. Uh, first is to congratulate Caitlin Rice and Cora Delich for competing in the Minnesota State High School League State Girls Tennis Tournament and finishing fourth. They were a doubles team? Yep. Okay. Then congratulations to Reed Melliker for finishing 13th at the Minnesota State High School League State Cross Country Meet and to the entire boys cross country team for winning the section seven uh, cross country meet and finishing 15th at the state. I should clarify that. Yeah, she got second at the section seven meet, which allowed them to qualify for so state they were, meet. Okay. My fault. No problem. They still qualified yep. for the state. Okay. Um, third item is to congratulate Mackenzie Perushak for being named to the all IRC volleyball team. And congratulations to Bailey Hilfers for being named to the All Arrowhead Conference Volleyball Team. Congratulations to Taylor King for being named to the All State Academic Team for Volleyball. Uh, you must have a 3.8 GPA throughout your high school career to qualify for that All State recognition. And congratulations to the volleyball team for being awarded a silver <coughs> award by the State Coaches Association for having an average GPA of 3.73. Congratulations to all of them. Um, visitor input. <clears throat> is there anybody in attendance in the audience that wishes to address the board that is not on an item on our agenda? Okay, then we will move on. Um, do we have any changes or deletions to the agenda? No, I think we don't have any changes. I just wanted to uh, point attention to uh, resolution 570 has been updated to reflect the proper vote totals and then uh, also the three change orders that are in that are part of 12.7 are in front of you as well. Okay. Then I will entertain a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Support. Moved by Leon. Support Tom. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, now we need to approve the consent agenda. Do we have any changes to the consent agenda? I'd like that the minutes be held until we complete the discussion um, on item 12.6. And, well, I have, a, there's something, I'll take it up when it's my time regarding the consent agenda. But I'd like the minutes held temporarily. Okay, so we will scratch item <coughs> A from the consent agenda. Um, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended? I'll move. Okay, moved by Beth. Support. Support Mona. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Then the two items that left on the consent agenda are the treasurer's report for the month of October and the first check writing in November and then three extracurricular appointments, uh, a playground aid at the Nell Sheen and uh, two junior high basketball, girls basketball coaches who are splitting the t uh, stipend. So I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. If 
but yeah. So well, we approved what was on it. Okay. What items were on it? We did not approve those items. We approved a change to the oh. consent agenda. Now oh. I'm asking for the agenda itself oh. to be approved. Moved by Beth. Support. <laughs> Support Mona. <coughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Okay, then in the personnel section of our agenda, item 11.1 .1 is appointment of Mark Heitzman to permanent director of buildings and grounds. Um, as part of his uh, probationary contract, it was written that uh, there be an evaluation done prior to his uh, probation being done in, on January 3rd. Um, I have completed that evaluation and I'm recommending to the board that we appoint Mr. Heitzman as the permanent director of building grounds and transportation and also I would ask the chairman to choose a board member to serve on a community to uh, look at this position as a whole and, and what we can do to possibly make it a little easier. Okay. We'll do that in two two motions. One to approve uh, Mr. Heitzman as the, as the uh, permanent director of buildings and grounds. Let's take that up first. Almost. Support. Moved by Beth. Beth, support Leon. Any discussion? I have a question. Okay. We recently had our building and grounds committee meeting at which point Mark was pretty emphatic that he was not certain he wanted to accept the position if we hadn't determined what kind of help we were going to be able to create for him. So I'm just a little concerned that we're doing this backwards, that maybe we should have determined that with him first. Well, the, the motion is for him to be hired on January 3rd. He's not, he's not off his probation until January 3rd, either okay. way. The reason that we're doing it this way is, as per the agreement in his contract, we're supposed to give him time to, I mean, we, we wouldn't want to hire him on January 3rd and expect him to make a decision that night. No, I understand that. Um, but so we're effectively saying that, yes, on January 3rd, we will, we agree to make you the permanent director. Uh, and in the meantime, he'll have some time to decide. Wouldn't it be prudent to go through and maybe table this until we decide what that position is for him to accept? Does that make sense? Two tries. Well, I mean, I'm just... But yeah. I think when we had discussed it, last year <coughs> that we had said we wanted to look at how that was going to be structured absolutely and it was my understanding at the time that to have everything that he has on his plate is a lot right. for this one position and so we talked about that getting extra help however that may be and and that's where that was and that conversation came up at the buildings and grounds right. committee meeting that yeah, I brought that up that we had already agreed quite a while ago that we'd do whatever we could to try and alleviate some of his concerns about that job. So uh, my only question was the timing, you know, should we have done it the other way? I don't want to make him feel pressured either that he's going to feel obligated to accept the position if he's not satisfied with the result of what we can come up with. And I think of the group of us here, I was one of the few that had sat in on the original discussions on how we might tear that job down to to alleviate some of the stress on him um, so I don't have any objections to to appointing him to the position I was just inquiring about the the order in which these things were being done but my understanding then is that um, we would offer him the permanent position effective January 3 understanding that between now and then we would try and resolve his concerns regarding the position is that correct, correct. And he still has the ability to say no on oh, January ab 3rd. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to make sure that I that right. I was clear on where we where we were as a board and right. what we were doing with him. Thank you. Any other discussion? And all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now the second part of the item is to um, get a committee of three board members that will work with our superintendent and Mark in working on some backup and support for him. 
So I would ask who would like to be on that committee. I think Mona, you already said yep. from your indication about being involved with the description or the process early on. You want to be on there? Yes. Any two others? I'll be on it also, Tom, Mark. And one more. I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Good. Thank you. So that's that will be our committee. Okay, item 11-2, uh, approved paraprofessional para appointment of Breda Albrecht. Um, this is a uh, replacement for the one that resigned at the last meeting in the high school. So moved. Moved by Leon. Support. Support Beth. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 11.3 is approval of an interim elementary principal um, as Sheena Stefanich. Well, we need to have discussion. I will move that we go well, forward. We can have discussion without a, <coughs> right. without a motion. Well, all right. Okay. Okay. So. okay. So if you have some comments, feel free. I, I don't know where we need to go with this. There are still a lot of differing viewpoints on what direction we need to go. I've been very vocal that I think we need a principal, but I've been led to believe that we may have some fly in the ointment there. Um, and when we talk interim, we're talking to the end of June of this year, is that correct? Okay. <coughs> well, I guess I should clarify. The principals typically don't work the whole month in June until the end of whatever they're done, 15th. Have we looked at the possibility of maybe uh, Lynn Bull handling both buildings, being that? Oh, Lynn's uh, retired. She's the one that's retired. Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> the Seabull. Sorry about that. The uh, senior high principal, couldn't she yeah, work her out to handle both We've explored that possibility. It's just that the duties of a high school principal take her out of the building so often it would be difficult. And having been an employee here, <coughs> when we've shared principals, it's very difficult to get that support when you need that support from, a, from your principal. It, that it's just difficult. There is not going to be a teacher that will disagree with that. I guess I'm on the term of we've kind of talked about this and beat it forever, permanent versus interim. I mean, we just she's been with the district for what, 11 years. Our city and principal with 20 some years of experience gave her a letter of recommendation, just hire her as the principal and move forward and. Restructure at a later time if that's what needs to be, but I mean at the end of the day that later time could be 10 years down the road, too But as per our conversation that we had um, So this could be interim if Everything goes right and Sheena decides that come fall that this is indeed the position that she wants the board decides that this is the position where we want her to be um, we don't have to do anything like we wouldn't have to open up for interviews or anything we can just say okay here we go correct that's, that's correct that by appointing her as interim I think it gives us more flexibility um, and very likely what's going to happen is what you were saying Ben that it will end up turned into a permanent position. But it gives us a little bit of time. And it gives her a little bit of time. If we start with an interim with the idea that it's going to become permanent. So, if there isn't any, aren't any other comments, someone would like to make a motion. I think it's appropriate. I'll move, support. Move in. Yes. At the salary that's at what pro rata shall yep. salary of the uh, the prorated until the end of the year. 
Yes. School year. Okay. Yeah. Any, any discussion on the motion? Well, I think this affords us the time to address any issues that come forward, any concerns or questions, and, and to work within the strategic plan because that mm -hmm. process will also be in place. We'll be talking about that a little so later. So I want to make sure that we don't overstep any bounds when that's still on the table too. But I think it's important to go forward. We have to have someone in that building. I agree. Any other discussion? Then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Item 11.4 is approved paraprofessional uh, appointment for Carrie Haas. Um, this was <coughs> obviously kind of a late tradition, but not knowing fully what our ECFE and school rating is three uh, numbers or needs were until that program was well up and running. We needed to add a few hours to, to Miss Haas. So I would recommend the board approves that. So these are just additional hours? Okay. I'll move that we uh, approve uh, paraprofessional additional hours for Carrie Haas. Support. <coughs> Moved by Mona. Support Leon. Any discussion? So how many hours is she at a week then total? It's, uh, it'll be is it what it, is, what it says right here? It'll be between 13 and 15 when you add the okay. five that we right. already had. So. Well. so this is her total? Yeah. Or 13 to, eight, 13 to 18. 13, that's what it is. 13 yeah. to 18. Depends on the week. Because one is 3 to 6, the other is 10 to 12. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item 11.5 is approved bear care aid appointment of Selena Lundstrom. We, uh, we have well, is it 20 to 30? Yeah, we have between 20 and 30 kids that attend bear care after school, so it's been real successful, but we need need some help in there. We only, currently only have two people in the program, so it's just a, it's an aid to help out with uh, the daily activities of bear care. I'll move. Support. Moved by Beth. Support Tom. Any discussion? And all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Approve. <laughs> Opposed. <laughs> Motion carried. New business. 12.1 uh, is to approve resolution 570, which is a resolution canvassing returns of votes of the school board general election. And I would ask the clerk to read that resolution, please. Sure. Resolution number 570. Resolution canvassing returns of votes of school district general election. Be it resolved by the school board of independent school district 2154 as follows. Item one, it is hereby found, determined, and declared that the general election of the voters of the district held on November 4, 2014 was in all respects duly and legally called and held. Item two, as specified in the attached abstract and return of votes cast, a total of 3,636 voters of the district voted at said election on the election of three school board members for four-year term vacancies on the board caused by the expiration of term on the first Monday in January next following the general election as follows. Mark Chad, 2,241. Mona Putzel, 2,087. Michael Peterson, 1,954. Jack Makala, 1,568. Item three, Mark Chad, Mona Putzel, Michael Peterson, having received the highest number of votes, are elected to four-year terms beginning the first Monday in January, 2015. Item four, the school district clerk is hereby authorized to certify the results of the election to the county auditor of each county in which the school district is located in whole or in part. The motion for the adoption of the foregoing resolution and that will continue once someone has made a motion and we have a second on that. 
And then once it's passed, we'll uh, itemize those also. Are you ready for a vote? Does if your reading of it is you're moving the resolution, you're making the motion? <laughs> I, that's why I'm saying well, I can, okay. but that's why I stopped where I was, so someone else had the opportunity to make that motion if they wish. I'll, well, Mona's mm -hmm. making the motion, I'll second it. All right. by, Mo by Mona, second Leon. All right, so the motion for the adoption of the foregoing resolution uh, was uh, made by myself and seconded <coughs> by Leon. Roll call vote. Director Forty. Aye. Director Shanlob. Aye. Director Gentilini. Aye. Director Collins. Yes. Director Peterson. Aye. For myself, yes, and absent is Director Young. Motion carries unanimously. Motion carries. I'd like to say congratulations, Mona and Mark. Congratulations to everybody, yes. Mm -hmm. Including Mr. Mackla for yes. running yes, for the position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, item 12.2 is approve updated library media specialist <coughs> job description. It was brought to my attention uh, <coughs> that we still had uh, Apple IIe's and stone tablets on our, on our job description for the media specialist. So we tasked our Zika and Cheryl Arrow to update it to reflect um, what the what is currently going on in the media centers. Um, a lot of it is still the same. Um, however, like I said, we did we did update to so that it reflected <coughs> current resources and technology that are in a library in our library. I have a question about all this. Okay. Are these contractual or union positions? Yes. Um, we just went through union negotiations and part of that was negotiating on job descriptions and stuff. Would that, does that stuff not better suit at negotiation time than to just continually make changes and make changes throughout the year? Or, I mean, just that, because that was a big thing, Plumber B and all that other stuff under the maintenance. Negotiations. I mean, that's part of that process, isn't it? The actual job description is not something that uh, goes into a, a union contract. It's something that the district keeps on file for expectations of what that position will be. Okay. Uh, close on that. Yeah, good question. What? Mm -hmm. Just because it was all that was seen like a big part of that, going in circles about different things of that. So, I think um, during negotiations there was a lot of discussion on rate of pay. Well, right, but rather then than the job description itself, right. and I think they're two different. And it was two different areas. Classification. Both items come forward, so I, I know right. what Mike's talking about. But mm -hmm. um, there's no indication here what the changes are from the old descriptions. I can I can redline them. You can table these, and we can redline them if you want to. I thought of that as I walked in here. Today. I think it might be helpful so okay. we can see how the job has grown or changed. We can do that. Okay, so we're going to table 12.2 through 12.2, 12 12 3, 3, and, and 4. Only, the only one that I would ask you don't is 12.5 because one didn't exist prior to now. Right. Uh, we just hired two of these people within the last few years and they didn't have a job description. So we, and this is, I'm on 12.5. Uh, we, we looked at what other districts were doing in the, across the state and what their job description was and, and kind of, and they sat down and we kind of worked this out so that it would fit what we feel our needs are. So I will entertain a motion to table items 12.2, 12.3, and 12.4 until our next meeting. I'll move. Move by Mona. Support. Support, Support Mike. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> was a tie. I'll move. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Then item 12.5 is approve the new job description or the job description for a technology integration specialist. What did we use when we hired them if we didn't have one? Uh, I wasn't here when we hired them, so I guess I'm just, I'm guessing they probably 
used a model one from MSB or something. I, I, I honestly don't know. Is this Tom Prosan's position? No, it's actually Lee Zika's the okay. Gilbert campus and, uh, and uh, Paula Madden is the one on this campus. Okay. They're both half time. And where did you say this one came from? This was a compilation of data? Okay. I'll make a motion for the job description for technology integration specialist. Okay, moved by Leon. Is there a second? I'll support. Second, Beth. Any discussion? Then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 12.6. Mona, I think you wanted um, to defer our minutes oh, wait, to this item. The discussion on it is done. It doesn't really indicate here what that will all consist of, but I wanted to make sure that we have that out of the way first. Thank you. So is I, there but I don't know who put that on the agenda, what the oh, discussion okay. is. That's what I'm saying, if we can Get have in. the discussion and then... Will someone start the discussion? I, I will. Um, okay. <clears throat> on uh, la our last board meeting, uh, our board chair called me and asked. Uh, he said he couldn't make it because of his, his foot. He asked if it would be possible to do the, uh, the Skype, and I had talked to MSBA earlier about such event and was under the impression that that would be okay um, when questioned uh, the next day. I, I called down the MSB again, and the one thing that we had forgot is uh, Keith's house would have needed to be posted to be proper. Uh, so that was a mistake on, on our part. I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of that. Actually, the, the guidelines for Skyping are involved more than than, uh, than just listing that location. It has to be ADA accessible. It has to be open to the public. Um, and then it, it goes on to say that all board members have to be able to both see and hear the person Skyping, which is hard to do on an iPad mini. He had to be able to see and hear us, and then those same criteria for the public. The public has to be able to see and hear the Skyping member, and the member has to be able to see and hear the public. And we didn't meet any of those criteria, so I can certainly understand why there was concern about that. And. Um, it was supposed to be posted 10 days before yes. the meeting. Yeah. 10 days? Yes. Well, it I says it 10 days in, no, oh, in the yeah. statutes. It normal. says 10 and days for, for that. Skyping. Oh, it must be a 10 day. Yeah. 10 day. Well, I'll go on to say that I called Wednesday after the meeting just because conversation was going on. And I had a four minute conversation with them, and they told me that we violated the law. And basically, what it came down to is that. If nobody contested as public board members that we could all be penalized if it gets prosecuted. Um, and the unsettling part is is that the superintendent is indemnified from that kind of stuff through his contract, but we're not as board members. Um, whether or not that stuff gets pushed that forward or not, I was kind of taken aback that, wow, this, this can get personal really fast for not understanding this stuff. And I mean, I hate to end up having to get paranoid and contest everything we do if we're not doing our due diligence up front. Um, I mean, I had a four minute phone call conversation. Lady said it was a violation. And by the time after four minutes I got off, she gave me the statutes that I could look and they were pretty easy to read actually for a layman like myself. So, um, and then to continue on that, uh, I did do a little Google search and it sounds like we were as a district sued for open meeting law violations prior and I've had conversation that we also had open meeting training um, if anybody was here at that time when when that went on it's kind of makes me a little nervous that we went through all that and we still dropped the ball so and that is covered in the MSBA <coughs> service manual too which sort of governs much of right. what we do which is, you know, drawn up based on statute. It's 
the MSBA right. doesn't make up the rules, they just <coughs> interpret them. And like I said, from a new member standpoint, I was a little bit like, oh boy, that's a big deal. Um, so. Well, I think we need to acknowledge that we had a violation, that we, like to we uh, trusted bad information, and it won't happen again. I mean, that's, that's really pretty simple. And well, I think it was unintentional by the board members. Uh, I mean, no, as I said, we trusted yeah, we didn't, information that yeah. was in right. error. We showed up, uh, and this <laughs> was here. Yeah, we didn't know either. Yeah. Which is why I asked <laughs> if yes. it was legal. Which you did. Yes, you did at yes. the end of the meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we were told it was too, and come to find out it wasn't. But I mean, I guess in, in hindsight, I, there, maybe we should put together some kind of procedural if something like that happens again. At the beginning of the meeting, we explain Keith or Mona or myself or whoever is going to be in this meeting. We went to go through the Roll well, that's call actually of the steps that we did. And well, that's actually covered with the posting. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying that at the beginning of the meeting, so we can disclaim all that stuff up front. This is what we did. This is, you know, to, for the public that we did it the proper way. You know, here's the bullet points. We check mark all the boxes, we move forward with the meeting, and there's no reason to be nervous and uncomfortable. I did read an opinion. Uh, what was it, the Minnesota administration, administrator or something like that? Uh, some city got sued for something exactly sim similar, but their opinion came back that they did, but they had a big projection of it and, you know, everybody could see it in the audience and then that other person he had cameras all over so that other person could view the whole thing, so it was kind of above board thing, so. Which is what the MSPA suggests, that there right. be technology in the boardroom that permits that if we're going to do it again. Right. Yeah, it's completely legal if you go about it the right way. Right. Lack of a better way to right. put it. And as far as I can see, I found it, the language of that in 2008 statutes with a little bit of clarification in 2009 and 2012. So, I mean, it's, it's been around for a long time. It's just you've got to go around. You've got to go about it the right way. Well, I think at the very least we owe the public an apology for for conducting that meeting. Um, again, it's it's not an excuse; it's an explanation that we we trusted information that turned out to be an error. It was not an intentional act by any mm -hmm. any stretch of the imagination. It was questioned at the time, and we were assured that we were on solid ground, which we turned you know found out that we weren't, and. Uh, I, like I said, I think at the very least the board owes the public an apology for, for going forward in that. There was no business conducted that was hidden from the public. The meeting was not <coughs> closed to the public. It was simply in, there were errors in how we did the posting and how we, we went forward with it. That being said, I, we get back to the minutes of that meeting, mm -hmm. if I may. Um, I would like it indicated in the minutes that we had a member attend by Skype so that that's re properly recorded, even though it's after the fact and it doesn't cover our notification piece of it, I think it's appropriate that we indicate that. Um, so rather than the members present, including um, Chairman Young, I'd like, I'd like to suggest that we change that wording that Chairman Young attended the meeting via Skype and include the address from which he attended the meeting. Um, I just, I just think that would be cleaner to have that up front. Um, and then there's a couple of other things that I noticed in, in looking through the minutes on the second page when we were talking about the UNESCO offer. I don't remember us ever using the words at least one other firm. I was under the impression it was anyone who came forward with an offer we'd, <coughs> excuse me, we would entertain. Apples to apples, I, I threw in there. Yeah. <laughs> you know. um, and then just, just to make make the minutes cleaner. Um, another couple of items down when we had the update on the innovation education partners, we use um, letters here to indicate what we were talking about and there's an error. We, it, they're transposed in one usage and I'd like that to just be written out what we were talking about the education innovation partners so that there's no question what that topic was.
Do we need a motion in the minutes, or can I make a comment about the open meeting thing? Make your comment. Uh, just you know, just for further the conversation as far as using Skype, even if I, I did find out, even if we don't notice publicly, Keith could have sat there on mute and listened to the conversation as long as he didn't participate. So it's participation is the line. Um, anybody apparently can use any electronic form without notification, but it's you cross the line when they just start participating. In that particular one, he actually, I think he supported a motion too, so mm -hmm. that kind of... He probably did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so he, he, can't even, he can't even discuss conversation, but he can listen to it all. So that's why I said, in the event that it ever comes up again, we'll just throw it out there and hit mute on it so we can't hear it if he's yelling or something, you know. But. Well, if it comes up again, we're going to do it the right way. Well, right, right. Hopefully, um, that's just every step of the punch list. And if we didn't hit the punch list, hit mute and let's move forward. You know. But. And that's all covered in the open meeting law, so right. it's not like it's hard to find the the list. No, I got it. Yeah. Um, maybe what we should do is table the approval of these minutes until the the corrections can be added and statements about the the skyping. Yeah, um, that's fine with me. And approve it at our next meeting. Approve these minutes. So I'll entertain a motion to table these minutes until they are corrected. Support. Move by Beth. Support Tom. That we're going to table approval of these minutes until our next meeting. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Uh, Twelve seven. Approval of a couple of three change orders. I have three change orders in front of you. One of them is for the roof duct uh, on top of the Gilbert School that was uh, taken part in the roofing project. Uh, there are some window uh, safety glass in the first floor, safety glass at the ramp stage in W19, and to su supply an additional awning window in the conference. Tool on which is the adapter. Are these the ones that were discussed at the building and grounds? Yes. Okay. And the last one is uh, due to the uh, problems that they had when they put the doors in at the Gilbert School. They, they found some <coughs> hidden obstructions in the uh, header. They had to make some modifications. <coughs> so that we have. Uh, how much left in a bus garage uh, fund, uh, Jeff? Is it 650000 It's or? in that range. I, I don't have an exact number yeah. yet because we haven't paid all of our bills, but it's, it's all in part that Ballpark, 650000 yeah. So we, we've used up $100,000 of that money then. Yep. That was on the roofing of the gym. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve the three change orders as presented, 127.12 and 3. I'll move. Support. Mike, support Tom. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item number 13, superintendent report information. <coughs> A few things. Um, one, when I, prior to me taking this job, there was a, uh, a grievance from the ASME group. I have uh, done what I feel I can do to this point with the grievance, and I would uh, like the chairman to make a uh, ad hoc board committee of two to three members to uh, review this grievance with me and uh, get a plan of action. Okay. Uh, unless there's objections, what I will do is appoint the three of us that did not get on an earlier committee, earlier in the meeting. So it'll be Mike, Leon, and myself. Is and there any, any more details of this that we can know? Can't talk about them now, but... Is it confidential thing? Okay. I'll, I'm fine. Leon? Yeah. Yes, sir? Okay. Sure. Me, you, and, and Leon. Leon. Mike, Leon, and myself will be on that com ad hoc committee. And then we need to set a date for when the three of us, four of us, can meet. Okay. You want to do that now? Yes. 
Do you have any potential dates for us? Can I? Well, I guess I, what, what, uh, Mondays are bad for me. Um, <coughs> uh, would you prefer the, this to be during the day, or are you looking to be? I would like to do it during the day, um, if possible. Uh, it's not going to take a whole lot of time. It's uh, just as long as it's Monday? not on Monday, that's fine. It, it could be this week. I don't care. Um, is this something that we can address right now? Like, uh, I mean, this week? I mean, or is there I would like some to get, things? I to would get like to get this addressed as soon as possible. <clears throat> Tuesday and Thursday aren't that good for me this week. Wednesday would be fine. Leon? Wednesday afternoon, I can't. How about Wednesday morning? Wednesday morning is fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. What time? Who do nine? Oh. Nine or ten? Ten? Ten is better for me. Ten o'clock on Wednesday, the twelfth. In my office. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Okay. I got. Excited? Um, I just want to throw a reminder out there, the MSBA conference on the 14th and 15th, uh, we do have, she has set everybody up for rooms, um, but we're looking for like a December 1st uh, cutoff date for if you're to commit, if you're going, if you're not commit going, because if you're not, then we can cancel and still get our money back. Is, when is, it, is this in January? Or? January 14th and 15th. Okay, that's right. Or is it 15th, 16th? Um, it's Wednesday night, Thursday night, whatever it is. Thursday, Friday. Yeah, but the rooms are for Wednesday oh, yeah. night, okay, Thursday Wednesday, night. Thursday, Unless yeah. um, a new board member plans to attend Thursday, the Friday. phase two training. Since the 15th and 16th. Yeah. I know, I still haven't decided if I was going to do the St. Cloud one or that one. Because if I did that one, it would be like a whole week of you down there, basically. Yeah. I was thinking about doing the St. Cloud one and kind of break it up. That's fine, just let me know. All right, another thing that we need to do is uh, we have to set our December meeting. That's the Truth and Taxation meeting. We start at 6. So. Right now, our regular meeting is December 8th. And we, don't, we don't have a regular December meeting set right now. We, would, oh, okay. we need to set our December meeting. Because oh, we, we only hold one in December 8th. Oh, huh? it has to be December 8th. It has to be December 8th? Yeah, because of I guess it is December 8th. <coughs> what is this? What is that day? Monday? That's a Monday. Monday, December 8th. But we'll have to switch it to 6 o'clock. Doesn't make any difference to me. I will be here. So it's our regular meeting day and date, but just the time would change. Oh, it's 6? <coughs> okay. So uh, we wouldn't have a meeting that day officially unless we set that date as our regular meeting in December? Is that what you're saying? It's. It, the December meeting, as I understand it, typically isn't put on the calendar at the beginning of the year because... Just the holidays and everything? Or? Well, it's... Because we have one. Because yeah, we have one. <coughs> okay. Do we need a motion to change the time, though? No. No? no. But it will be 6 p.m.? Mm -hmm. On the... <coughs> we'll put it out to the public. Everyone, that there's a Veterans Day program at the Gilbert campus tomorrow. Nine o'clock. What time? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. I don't want to give them bad information. Uh, let's see. Last thing I got, I, I put out a uh, strategic planning timeline. I have been in talks with uh, MSBA for doing our strategic plan. Uh, uh, Sandy Dunlock is the is my contact person there. Uh, she wanted to have a meeting with Keith and I being as the board chair today uh, to go over some information about how we we're going to get going and, and what the timeline might be. Uh, Keith couldn't make it so Mark did come and sit with me so you can chime in at any given point. But this is kind of the, uh, the outline we came up with. Um, we're going to need to, uh, first thing we're going to do is have a committee of the whole meeting. We have to set that in a few minutes here. 
preferably for next week, to uh, to go through a lot of different things. We have to pick uh, our survey methods. We need to come up with a uh, means of or a method of picking up picking uh, committee members, and then in picking a process for how we're going to get input, be it public meetings or surveys or whatever have you. So that. That is something that we need to, we had kind of toyed around with uh, Monday, but we're here Monday is not good. So, I mean, how does uh, Tuesday the 18th sound for people at 5 o'clock? I won't be here. You can't do it Tuesday? You can't. Mondays are fine if they're at 5 o'clock. Okay. I'm just saying Monday days are bad. What What's a good day for you guys? Wednesday the 19th. Not good. Plan around me. Thursday. Why is your calendar full in front of you or what? <laughs> yeah. <It's> just <laughs> Thursday the twentieth? I'm open. Thursday the twentieth? Okay. What what time? Five. Five. And just sitting in on the conversation earlier this morning. Uh, we, I think we were on the phone like an hour and a half with her. Um, I think you can expect a fairly long meeting. There's a lot of things to go over. So it's not going to be a half hour. I would say um, probably around two hours. Yeah, our last it's, round it's of strategic take. planning, some of them <clears throat> went five and six hours, so that's right. not uncommon. That's but this is kind of what we're trying to do is be establishing kind of the outline of how we're going to go about it. Not specifics, but more of an outline, but allow yourself enough time because it could get to be a fairly long meeting. Okay, so then out of that, uh, we're going to, together we'll appoint uh, the committee. Uh, I think she suggested somewhere between 15 and 25 to be on that committee. Right, but that's one of the things we'll be talking about. Is who those is people will be. Committee, do we want to And have how we're that? going to. How we're going to select them. Yeah. And, uh, because last time it was done by letters of interest is where we started. Yep. That's, those are the things we, we will be talking about next Thursday. Um, one of the things that she wanted me to do is uh, prepare a state of the district report. And it says uh, mid-November to late December, but I'm going to push that to be probably the second week of January. Um, and that's essentially going to be uh, information about all things going on so it can give us a basis for <coughs> what we're going to be looking at. Um, the fourth one down there, MSBA comes to gather stakeholder input. She was talking December, she had December 16th or December 18th available. And what that is is she would, uh, I think uh, shortly there after school, like in the three o'clock range, she would invite staff to come in and have a meeting with them just to gain input as to what their, how their feelings are about it. Um, and then in following that, uh, later in the evening, they would have uh, community members, invite community members to come in. Uh, so we just need to pick, uh, it's either Tuesday or Thursday, 16th or the 18th. I think we might have even told her that we were leaning toward the 16th. I think that was probably me that was leaning toward the 16th. I think that'd be better. The closer we get to Christmas, the harder it's going to yeah, get right. to have people right. stop in. Okay. Anybody have any problems with the 16th? I can't do either, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, you're busy. Boy swimming starts. <laughs> oh, boy swimming. Are we talking December or January? December. 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 Okay. Just making sure. All right. So then... Uh, Oh, what time was that one on the 16th? Five. Uh, well, we don't have a time on that one yet. Oh. It's the staff is. Oh, so staff is doing it after school, and community will be after that. Julie, really, what day do we want? It was them. just needed to pick a day. Oh, Come on. okay. I see. I think the 16th. Would be I'm trying to keep up on this one. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now backing up a little bit, um, when we pick who the committee is and what method of survey that we're going to use and we have a bunch of sample surveys that we'll go through next on the 20th 
um, on the 24th, we're, that's the regular board meeting, we'll adopt those methods and that, uh, and who the, who the committee is. And then after it's adopted on the 25th, that survey or whatever method we choose, we'll hit the street and we're looking at going through the 12th of December. So it'll be out there available for people to complete for about three weeks. Um, at that time, MSB will compile that information and we'll uh, start to sum we'll, we'll receive a summary of that probably mid-January, early mid-January. You can see that one on well, the sixth one down. Okay, so then the seventh one down, school district hosts the first planning meeting. This was our, after we have all this information and that, um, we got our first planning meeting and she really encouraged us once we start the planning meetings to knock them down fairly quickly so people don't get bored with us. Um, so we're going to do the first one on the 20th of January. I'll, I'll, I'll send all these dates and stuff out to you too. It's just I'm throwing information at you now. Um, in between that, um, they, will, they will give us another summary. We'll have our second one on February 3rd, which is two weeks later. Um, and then the third and probably last one will be on February 17th. Those are all Tuesdays. Perfect. Um, Yay. They're all about two weeks apart. So anyway, at the end of the, that process, they're going to prepare basically a draft document of, of what that strategic plan will look like. And at that point, we'll need to um, start looking at action plans uh, for how we're going to meet those goals. And that, that's, about, that's the point where MSB will kind of leave us on our own. So we have to, once we get to that point, we'll, uh, we'll decide how we're going to move forward. Um, but they were looking at having their complete document to us by, I'm look at the calendar here. Our regular meeting on March 23rd. They would have that for us to ponder. So anyway, after that is uh, that is uh, approved, we would, like I said, we'd look at uh, developing the action plan. We'd have to get the uh, another strategic planning committee together to, uh, and that would be our fourth and last meeting. Uh, but we get together to recommend <coughs> to the board adopting uh, both the goals, the, the, the vision, and the beliefs, and as well as the action plan. And then the whole thing would go to the board by April 27th. So it would be in place prior. I, th I think the timing of that is pretty good. It's, uh, so then it gives us some time to do something about it before the end of the school year. Yeah, absolutely. We can't let it drag any longer than yeah. that either. <coughs> so, so that's kind of where we're at right now. Like I said, we'll, uh, we'll get a little more into detail next on the 20th so that hopefully <coughs> your questions are answered and you start to understand what's going on. I have a ton of, a ton of trees to copy off that she gave <laughs> us uh, that we'll go through and I'll send that to you ahead of time electronically so you can start to <coughs> peek at it. That's all I have. The only thing I would add to that is in the discussion, I think there's two or three other districts going through uh, planning like this at the moment that they're working with. Um, so we're not inventing the wheel. We're inventing the wheel. There are, they're going to have some guidelines for us on how to go about this. And we've already got a strategic plan in place. This is... Yes. Just... Sort updating. of going yep. from there forward. Yep. So. Updating it. Yeah, because this one will be expiring. So. Yeah. <coughs> and that might be something to provide to us board members, is what is the current strategic plan or five-year plan or whatever. Okay. okay. Anything else? That's all I have. Okay. Um, board member topics. Mike. Well, I have something that I'd like to comment on and maybe find out what direction I can go to get educated or maybe we can go together and get educated. Um, in conversation the other day, um, I, I called Keith about a greeting, meetings and grounds committee meeting and somehow we got talking in circles and he mentioned the fact that 
our junior high principal position isn't vacant. And I didn't understand that. And at the end of the day, he said, well, because Jeff was on a one-year leave of absence. And I said, well, recently I, I got Jeff's copy of his contract, and he's on a three-year leave of absence. And Keith emphatically disagreed with me. Um, <clears throat> I don't really know where I'm going for this, just throwing this all out there so we're all on the same page. <laughs> and in the same breath, he said, well, Jeff's got a uh, year of probation. And I said, well, he's not, he's not a continuing contract employee. He's contractual, and there's no language. And I said, I've asked Jeff about this. What's the terms of his probationary? And he doesn't have any. And there's no language in his contract stating that either. Nor language for evaluation purposes. So the, the interim of that is reading that is, if Jeff is on leave of absence for three years from that position, if if that's above board or not, the day that Brian works, we don't notice him after his probation. I mean, he's a, he's a continuing contract employee that day, and that could be a conflict, providing if Jeff ever wanted that position again. No, it's not a conflict. What, what happens is the, uh, the Principals Association will draft a, every, every year they draft a seniority list. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, they each have a, a higher date. And, uh, is that per district or just as like your complete educational background in the state, or is that just it's district uh, with Gilbert? It's pretty common. I, I mean, but it, no, I mean, is it just the higher date for Ed with Gilbert? Yes. Not necessarily. Okay. Oh, I get oh, I'm sorry. Saying. Yeah. Nope. <coughs> um, thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's just Ed with Gilbert. So anyway, if I if I chose at any point to to go back, the least senior one. It's bumped up. The least, right? If there's one below me. Right. If there isn't one below me, then I'm on. Well, I guess the only reason why I question that is that reading the statute of contract employees, I, this almost should have been like a separate, a separate thing in poor, you know, as a principal, you should have asked for a leave of absence versus it being part of a you as a superintendent asking for a leave of absence. Well, I did. As a, as a principal, I asked for a leave of absence. But it's in your superintendent contract. But with that, when we gave Mark Heitzman, when we offered him mm. the director of buildings and grounds, his leave of absence from his position right. is in his contract for building and grounds. I mean, I well. that if I remember correctly. Mm. Which, I is, which is typically what, what a school would do to a contractual and or a, individual contract employee. It's not something that you would put in, in a collective bargaining agreement. Well, I, you're right. I, I guess I understand that. But if it was a separate line, I mean, because the only thing is that um, under the extended leave of absences statutes, when I was reading all those, it was saying it, and a board may grant leave of absence for a teacher, which is defined as principal in that statute, if they have five years of employment in our district. And I don't mm -hmm. think you had five years, did you? What's that? You didn't have five years of employment in our district before that leave of absence. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's kind of, I guess, my point is that, you know, per that situation came up, could Brian have an argument that that was an invalid leave of absence granted? Those are, under those are things you, worry, you typically worry about when they happen. Well, I mean, we have a three-year leave of absence, and in the third year, we don't want to compound contractual ongoing continuing rights and then next thing you know we have a problem. I mean and then like I said in, in the other sense too there's another line in the statutes that says superintendents the board isn't obligated to grant a superintendent on leave of absence a position in a district either so I'm like they're not obligated they chose <clears throat> to right but I'm just saying as far as Keith's argument that that position is vacant I mean technically is it because we could make that decision at any time at, at a later date. I'm just throwing this out there. And then, I mean, to continue on the whole contract conversation is that uh, I asked for a contract of the principals, and there's language in there citing, what was it, 88, 89 collective bargaining agreement, and it probably must have been during the co consolidation time. And 
I uh, asked Kathy if we had that information, and she wasn't able to find it. And I guess my whole point is, is I think maybe at some point we should maybe take a step back and look at, like next time the principals get negotiation, look at actually what's in their contract, because I guess if, if it came down to getting sued, I bet you a lawyer would find out what all that referenced information means, and we don't seem to know what it means. So there's referenced information for which there's no associated documentation? Um, Is that what you're saying? None that I could find. <coughs> I don't okay. know what the right. sentence even means. Oh. But okay. I could <coughs> be totally way off base with this. But Lynn would be the last principle that that would affect. Well, Correct? Because it, I mean, everybody else was hired after 89. Lynn was working <coughs> in the district in the 80s. Well, we don't know until we look at it. It could be a going forward policy stat. You know what I'm saying? It could be a right. going forward. Because they're under a, co uh, for, per what Kathy told me, is that <coughs> the principals are a collective bargaining unit. And under that definition of documentation that apparently we don't know the language of. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. we don't know if it's just the um, procedural, procedural um, formation of it or if there's actually statutes and language in there that could mean something, I guess, for lack of a better way to say it. I mean, I, I think we should find out what or strip that language out of our next time around, you know, I mean. There's a, there's a lot of things that come into play. And I think what Jeff alluded to earlier with the seniority mm -hmm. ranking that the uh, principal association does. Uh, last time I was on the board, years <coughs> ago, 25 years ago, whatever, we had um, that come into play. And we had to rehire an individual as our principal who had not worked here for like three years. But because of the seniority in that association, overruled contracts that we had entered into. So it is not a simple, straightforward issue. And there's a lot of things that, that come into it. Um, right. Well, and that's my point, is that <clears throat> I, I think we should start getting our bearings on how all these things affect other things. Um, um, like, a, I guess, the topic of debate. Proactive rather than reactive. Well, right. I mean, I don't want to wait for three years and say, you know, Jeff and Brian are going to duke it out and we're, it's going to cost the district money to litigate. I mean, because Brian would have an argument that, you know, maybe under that statute of continuing contract law that he doesn't have, you know, that it, it wasn't, it shouldn't have been even granted. And Jeff's like, I got some, sure, you know what I'm saying? And then we would be in the middle of it. So, I mean, why? If there's a potential for a problem, I think maybe we should address it. And if it's something that we can address up front, I mean, and, and I'm not just saying this particular situation, but I'm saying it's obvious that there are numerous things that maybe have just been copied and pasted over the years that aren't applicable for today or now or current. Negotiations will start again in 10 years. But so. in the meantime, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have the associated documents for any citation within <coughs> that contract. Right. Well, I, I just because of everybody talks like they, you know, everybody, mm -hmm. everybody says, I know, like, for instance, Jeff's on probation for a year. Well, no, he's not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, at the end of the day, you can, you can think you know everything, but we don't know unless we know. And black and white means we know. I mean, talking about it isn't knowing, it's thinking, you know. Um, <clears throat> or, you know, Keith was adamant that, you know, we, we would never give anybody three-year leave of absence. I'm like, well, you did. I mean, I didn't. My signature's not on there. I'm like, it is, you know. I mean, <clears throat> it's knowing and thinking are two different things, I guess. It's a, that's why I just want to call it out, say we're all on the same page, and there might be potential things that, you know, whether we can go back and change what we did, but going forward, Maybe we would have some hindsight to make better decisions. Um, so like I said, I guess I don't know where I was going for it, just kind of making sure everybody was on the same page and thinking that, you know, we should maybe next time we do something, look back and see if we did it right the last time or make it better the next time, <coughs> for lack of a better way to say it. Um, I think that's, for the most part, all I had is just to talk about that maybe we should 
<coughs> look at things a little more thorough and <coughs> maybe revisit <coughs> getting different attorneys involved too, if, or at least maybe sitting down with attorneys when we do contracts. I don't know if we do or not. I mean, the, the biggest thing I like to say, Jeff's contract that struck me is it said the superintendent and the board shall make this ballot, and Jeff signed it, and he wasn't the superintendent that day. I'm like, I, the intent is there, but it, it was kind of just a sloppy <clears throat> contract that I think if a lawyer drafted it, it probably would have been, the declarations would have been a little differently. Hmm? Well, I guess I would say I'm not impressed then. <laughs> Take that up with the lawyer. Yeah, we will next time we... Okay. <clears throat> anything else? Nope, that should be it. <clears throat> Mona, do you have anything? <clears throat> Two items, if I may. You, you can have ten if you want. Thank you. Um, attached to our packet were the minutes from the Channel 12 public access meeting. Um, and I've seen this in their minutes before. I just like them to be a little, a little more careful about what they give us. They have one person's first name and someone else's last name, so you're never really sure who, who did what. Um, that being said, the other thing I'm finding is that now we've gone this entire period and the <coughs> meeting wasn't posted on the school's website from the last time. And the public relies on that. I'd, I'd like to see it there. Not everyone has Channel 12. A lot of people have other means for uh, television. So I think it's important that it be there. It wasn't on Channel 12's website and it wasn't on the schools. So maybe going forward we need to just tighten that up. We do pay for that service and I'd like to think that it's going to be there when someone wants to review it. Um, the other thing I'd, I'd like to bring up, and I fully expect that this is something that we will have to discuss in the future, but just to get it on the table, is fundraising. Um, not a day goes by that we aren't approached by someone claiming to represent somebody within the school looking for money for something. Um, I have asked, the school does not maintain a list of authorized groups for fundraising, so we have no contact people for some of these <coughs> organizations. I think they all have their hearts in the right place, but I think when, it, when you get right down to it, you know, we, we've got a lot of people out there asking for money, claiming that it's on behalf of students, and we have no accountability because we don't even know who we're dealing with sometimes. Um, you know, the latest is the PTO out of Gilbert. I think they do a wonderful job. I think what they, what they provide to the district is, is vital. But when you look at their list, you know, we've, we've got a lot of people in this district, and it's borne out, you can prove it through the statistics, who are at or below the poverty level, and yet every darn day they're getting a request. And this one includes things like pizza parties and ice cream socials. And those things are fine, but quit asking the kids to raise the money to do this and then take credit yourself. I'm sorry, but I think we need to tighten up who's raising money on behalf of the school and what it's for. And if they want to say that they're representing the district or representing <coughs> a group of students within the district, I think they need to put a little more thought into it instead of just going forward and raising money. Didn't we have a policy on this not too long ago? I thought we had talked about this. Yes, we have. There, there are some things in place, I found. But there is, within the district, no one maintains a list of authorized fundraising groups. Um, and we have no contact information. Um, those whose, and, and Candace can better address those groups um, where the money does come into the, into the school. But those are, that's minimal, my understanding is. I mean, if you look at the total number of people that are raising money for different things. And again, I'm not suggesting that any of the, the um, reasons that they're raising money aren't valid. But it's the fact that you get absolutely swamped with this because everybody who comes up with an idea decides they're going to go out and raise money. And oftentimes, and this is an example, they send it home with the kids with a, a fairly pointed letter that you are expected to sell whatever that item is and return the money to the school by a very specific date. Not every kid has access to someone who's got the money to do it. And then they feel left out, and I, I just think it's wrong. Um, so maybe, and, and we may not 
even have a leg to stand on, I don't know. But maybe we need to look at a way to better vet who's raising money and using our students to do it. So that's something I think we need to. <coughs> it's for another meeting when we have better information, perhaps. But it's, it's, it's old already. Anything else? Thank you. I do not have any board member topics. Leon? Nope, I don't have anything. Beth? Nope. Tom? Well, going back to the website, is there a website posted on a regular basis that we, uh, our meetings are out there on a regular Denise basis that we don't get one or two months behind or something? Denise Berry is the one that maintains our website. And we did ask, and she told me that she never received the video from, from Channel 12. That's why it wasn't, wasn't on there. We'll, uh, we'll do better at bugging people that get that done. It was it did air on Channel 12 at Saturday at 6 o'clock, though. But like I said, not, not everybody, everybody has, has it. it. So. I th yeah. <clears throat> we specifically <clears throat> requested that it be posted on our school's website. So, I mean, that's that's an established oh, all right. no, source. All right. No, definitely. Okay. Anybody else think of any board member topics? We've got our own ones. Okay, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Meeting adjourned.